Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, Corey Kluber, Adam Wainwright, Felix Hernandez, and more pitchers to be named later have been accused of using an illegal substance. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are covering a recent report by the LA Times on an ex-Angels employee that has filed a lawsuit against the league claiming that its top players and its top pitchers used his illegal substance and have been using illegal substance to aid in their pitching for years now. And this news is very upsetting for me. Uh, you know, I don't like cheating, quote unquote cheating. Um, it's not good for the game. It's not good for, uh, you know, fans or and or kids that look up to these players. Overall, it's just not a good image for Major League Baseball. Regardless of what I think, I'm going to have you guys look at the report and I'm going to pull out a few things. And then I want you to think for yourself down in the comments below on what your thoughts are about this whole, you know, illegal substance thing. And, and I'm going to pose a question later in this video that I want you guys to answer down in the comments and I'm going to give my opinion on. Here is the LA Times report. This was written by LA Times staff writer Mike DiGiovanna and it is detailing that an ex-Angels employee has filed a lawsuit against the league claiming that its top pitchers and previous pitchers and previous players used his illegal substance on the field. This whole story is around Brian Bubba Harkins. Bubba is just the name that he was kind of commonly referred to. His name isn't so much what you need to focus on. It's uh, what he got fired for and how he got fired that you really need to know as opposed to his name. Okay, so this is the piece. These are the names involved. Brian Bubba Harkins, the ex Angels employee that's filing this lawsuit is claiming that Major League Baseball has evidence on hand implicating that several star pitchers, and here's the names, Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, Felix Hernandez, Corey Kluber, Adam Wainwright, for using foreign substances to improve their grip on the ball. Harkins was fired by the Angels, by the former, I'm sorry, Harkins was fired by former Angels general manager. So the general manager that fired him isn't even with the team anymore. But he was fired by former Angels general manager Billy Epler on March 3rd. I'm going to assume that's 2020. Three days after MLB issued a memo to teams saying that it would be enforcing a long ignored policy forbidding the use of illegal substances to enhance a pitcher's grip. Now, MLB hitters rarely complain because a, a better grip on the ball usually means better control for pitchers and less chance of being hit in the head, you know, by a pitch. So, what does this mean? I, I find it very interesting because this, this report goes on to state that uh, you know, Brian Harkins was actually, he was basically a public scapegoat for the league. It's interesting that he was fired just three days after MLB Baseball is issuing a memo to its teams and its players saying that, you know, we are going to forbid the use of illegal substance. And he's fired just three days afterward. And so, you know, the, 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 the timeliness of the firing, it makes you wonder. I mean, it makes me wonder, especially as you know a journalism graduate that something ain't, isn't right here something ain't right you know that the timeliness of the firing is certainly something to note from a legal standpoint um and you know it, does mlb baseball really crack down on this kind of a thing because let me let me let me um let me pull out a few things so obviously an illegal substance does a couple things for pitchers i have a few notes here this is what you know an illegal substance would provide you as a pitcher. You ready? So, Brian Bubba Harkins, he's, you know, he's accused of doctoring these baseballs with rosin and pine tar. So, some kind of a mixture of rosin and pine tar. I don't know to what percentage more rosin than pine tar or more pine tar to rosin. I don't know. But he has this mixture. Okay, so allows for a better grip. That's probably going to increase your velocity if you have a better grip on the baseball. Maybe you can get a little bit more behind it. But more, Im more importantly, spin rate. So breaking balls. You have a better grip. You're able to put more force on your fingers as you're trying to, you know, as you're trying to flick a baseball 
or you know or or get some kind of break on the ball you're going to be able to get more force on your fingers as you try to get that rotation off the ball and then that's probably going to increase your swing and miss rates as well as you know your spin rate as an MLB pitcher on your breaking balls they're suddenly going to break you know if your curveball is breaking i don't know 6 let's say 6 inches 6 to 8 inches now suddenly it's break 10 to 12 inches it's quite a quite a difference to you know the average MLB batter some of the top you know again some of the top names are involved in this report and it's very setting the sea harkins is claiming that several angels pitchers over the years have used his substance names including troy percival Brendan Donnelly, Tyler Chatwood, Kevin Jepson, most recently Cam Bedrosian, Kenyon Middleton, Yasmiro Petit, Luke Bard, Matt Andrees, Dylan Peters, Jose Suarez, and Dylan Bundy. That's a lot of names. I'm sure that list could be longer. Troy Percival, he was an Angels closer from 1995 to 2004. I was born in 1998, so that gives you some context that MLB baseball is dealing has been dealing with the use of illegal substances as well as... And that's just a thing. Is this an illegal substance? Uh, this is the question that I want to pose to you all. It's obvious MLB baseball has been dealing with this for a very long time, right? Even before I was born. Pitchers and batters have been looking for ways to get a better grip on both the ball as well as their bat. But this is the problem that I have with MLB, with, you know, the league in general. Give me three things. The league needs to give me three things. Three things. What constitutes an illegal substance? Do research behind that illegal substance and tell me which players are more likely to use that substance. Is it pitchers? Is it batters? Is it position players? You know, tell me who on the field is more likely to use that illegal substance. And then three, if you are going to ban it, are you going to partially ban it or fully ban it? You know, are you going to partially ban it from pitchers? Are you going to partially ban it from batters? So, for example, the rosin and the pine tar. It's a mixture. Everybody knows MLB pitchers have access to a rosin bag on the mound during an MLB baseball game. Everybody knows that. Sitting right there. Big old white bag. And MLB baseball is obviously opening up to say, hey, we understand you get sweaty while you're out there. Your hands get sweaty and the ball gets slippery. Here's a rosin bag. Throw some on your hands. You get a better grip, right? Well. Clearly, that isn't working very well because other people want to use, you know, uh, you know, different substances and, and get different mixtures. Now, think about that. Now, moving over to the pine tar. Everybody knows MLB batters like to put pine tar on their bats. Not only that, they also like to coat their helmets in the stuff as well. I never really understood that, but they do. And they put on their batting gloves and they're touching all over their bat. They're touching, you know, they're touching their, their pants. They're touching their... Their helmets, their hands are all over the place. And, you know, they're getting that all over those those batting gloves. That's why you see the inside of batting gloves are so, you know, dark and everything. That's that pine tar that allows them to get a better grip on the baseball bat, on that wooden bat. Now, back to the banning thing. Now, let's go back to that. MLB Baseball stating that this is a problem. That's why Harkins was fired, right? It's obviously a problem, and he did something wrong. That's why he was fired. Okay, good enough. But what qualifies as an illegal substance? Because you already have rosin, and you already have pine tar on the playing field. It's already there. It's already present. Why is it suddenly illegal for somebody to take those two things and then combine them. You see what I'm saying? So if MLB Baseball is wanting to go about this the smart way, they would make a statement to players and teams stating, the rosin bag stays on the mound and rosin stays on the hands of the pitcher. Pine tar you can use when you're batting, but it does not make it to the pitcher's mound. And same goes for the rosin bag. The rosin bag doesn't make it to the batter's box. That simple. You know, if you're wanting to partially ban it, say rosin is banned for batters, pine tar is banned for pitchers. Makes sense? Makes perfect sense to me. Well, that is my issue with MLB baseball is we, we're not getting that clear line in the sand stating one way or the other. We're getting this kind of jumbled message and, you know... Pitchers have kind of, pitchers and batters and MLB players in general have kind of been, you know, leery of, yeah, you can use this, you can use that, we'll kind of be lenient with you. No, no leniency. One way or the other, are you fully banning it? Are you partially banning it? Who uses it on the MLB field? You know, via research, find that out. And what is constituting an illegal substance? It's obviously something that probably enhances your performance. That would make sense. But, um, 
you know, is that, <laughs> I hate to take it to this extent, but is that via an injection, you know, something that is, you know, biologically enhancing your performance or is it a is it an exterior substance that is being rubbed onto the skin? You know, go to that extent, be very detailed via research to say these are the lines. This is the thick line. And then subsection to that, these are the thin lines as well. And all these lines you simply do not cross. You will be, you know, subjected to a full season. You will not play a full season. If we catch you, we're not going to give you a warning. If we catch you, you're done. It's that simple. You're done. One instance, you're done for the rest of that year. Two instances where you're done for the rest of the year and the next season after. You know, be that specific. Be that aggressive because we're not going to see, you know, we're not going to see change. And, you know, something that supports that claim is, for example, the shooting up steroids, for example, uh, you know, injecting steroids that was for so long, it was just so lenient. And then now finally, we've been seeing, you know, full season bans from it, you know, players that have tested positive, you know, for using steroids via testing that they're done for a full year. Let me know down in the comments below about that question. Here it is, and I'll state it again. Is this issue more on the players or is this issue more on MLB baseball? Think about that. Is it if it's MLB baseball, what do they need to do? You know, my three things again are they need to be stating what an illegal substance is. Who uses it through research on the MLB field? You know, who uses it? Find that out via research. And then are you fully banning it or are you partially banning it? But let me know down in the comments below. Is it more of a problem of the players or the league not drawing that thick line in the sand? Let me know and sound off down in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, I appreciate your guys' recent support. The channel is doing very well. One of the videos, I think my Met Super Team video is approaching 1,000 views. So I, I thank you so much. I'm going to try to get as much content out as I can. As of recently, it's been very busy. You know, we've been we've been doing some seasonal cleaning in the apartment, and then we had the MLB Arbitration Day just yesterday, so it's kind of been nuts and crazy. I did a lot of posting on my Instagram, so go follow me over there. I'm following a lot of that stuff over on my Twitter, so go follow me over on my Twitter as well. And that is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys for the support. Go support me over on my social media, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Tabor time out. Peace.